So I'm at my college maker space and I've been spending quite some time getting it COVID ready. And the next thing I was about to do, I thought would make for a really neat project that you can also do yourself if you'd like. So here's the situation. Um, I've got a little computer um, area here where we have, well, we had three computers. So one here, we had one in the middle and that was removed because the students would be just too close together. So two right now. And what I wanted to do was, was put a barrier in the, in the middle here, um, sort of like those sneeze guards you see at the grocery store. But it is a maker space. Um, I don't just want to throw like a piece of plastic, you know, or a plexiglass in the middle. I actually want it to look good. So I was thinking of what I can do. And I have a row of PET. And I have some birch plywood here and I have a laser cutter and I've been thinking of a good reason to play with the Voronoi plugin in Fusion 360 so let's combine all these together and, uh, and see what comes out. I'll jump into the Fusion design in a minute but basically after completing my design I exported the sketch as a DXF file and grabbed a 12 by 12 inch piece of 1 8 inch plywood and sent it to my laser cutter. The laser cutter I'm using is a 30 watt epilogue zinc which has a cutting area of 12 by 16 inches. I laid out four panels that I cut and pre-COVID time this would have been enough for a very stylish partition but since I want this to be an actual functioning barrier I'm going to sandwich a sheet of PET plastic between uh, two layers of cut panels. I did this by applying double sided tape directly on the wooden panels. The plan here will be to just give me a temporary hold while I come in with a second layer of panels to sandwich the sheet in between. Next I'll need to drill a hole on each corner of the individual panels and since I don't want to drill directly into these new workbenches, I'm going to place a sheet of insulation foam right under the panels. After trimming away the excess plastic, I'm going to then securely attach each panel in place with M3 screws. To hang this, I'm simply going to tie some fishing line on the ends here and attach it to the ceiling. Right away I realized the problem. Because of the gap in the middle, the panel does not hang straight. It wants to fold like a book. So I grabbed a pair of calipers and just measured the width of the panel and used this information to quickly hop onto Fusion 360, model the bracket, send it to my 3D printer, and I'd say within a half hour I had this little bracket that I just simply snapped on top. And that did the trick. All right, let's jump into Fusion 360 now and I'll show you how I came up with my design. So I ended up using the Voronoi plugin to create these designs. And the first thing we'll need to do is actually go to the App Store to get the plugin. To do that, you'll want to go to Tools and then click on Add-ins and then go down to Fusion 360 App Store. On the search bar, you'll want to type Voronoi. And you'll see you'll have two options, the Voronoi Sketch Generator and the Voronoi 3D. We're going to go with the Voronoi Sketch Generator. And you'll see this thumbnail here. Click on that. And then you'll have to choose whether you want to download it for a Mac OS or for a Windows PC. Simply choose the one you want and then click on Download. Autodesk will then ask you to sign in, so just follow those directions and then go ahead and install the application. Once you install the application, you will have to restart Fusion 360. And when you open up Fusion 360, you can go to Create and all the way down you'll see that you have a new option called Voronoi Sketch Generator. Alright, let's see how it works. I'm going to select it. 
And you're gonna get this dialog box here and you'll see you have a few options here. We'll play with a few of these in a second, but right now I'm gonna leave everything the same. We have our uh, sketch selection. I don't have to actually select a sketch right now. We can select a sketch, but the default will just throw it on the XY plane. Edge style, we can go between curved and straight. We have number of cells, uh, number of Lloyd's relax iterations there. We set our width and our height, and then we have a percentage scale here. So let's just leave everything in, as it is default, click OK. And we see that we get this sketch created here. So already without any effort, we get this really neat design here. So what I'm going to do is just let's play around for a little bit just to see what the options are because it really doesn't tell you much um, on the app, so you kind of have to figure it out. So I'm going to go to um, Move Copy here. I just simply right-click and I get my Move Copy option, and I'm going to go ahead and take this and move it to the right just so we can compare what some of these changes do. Because every time you create a new one, it actually will put it on the same spot unless you actually move it. So, okay, I'm gonna go to create again, Vernoy sketch generator. This time, let's just change from the edge to curved and then choose that just to see what difference that does. And you see how we get a different shape there. Um, all right, so let's move these over and I'll just highlight a few of the uh, different options and what they do. I won't go too deep into it and then I'll show you exactly how I made my design. So we'll grab it again and this time, so number of cells right now it's 16. That seems pretty obvious. If I double that to 32 and leave everything else the same, you see that I get 32 of these cells instead of 16 here. So we get a lot more cells and they become a lot smaller. So if that's the look you want, you would want to increase the number of cells. All right, let's go ahead and move these over. I'll just do a couple more so we can see some of the differences. Now the next option here, the Lloyd's Relax Iteration. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that. I actually played around with this quite a bit and it's hard to tell what exactly is going on. So if any of you can explain this to me and break it down in a way we can understand it, go ahead and put it in the comments because I actually, I tried a whole bunch of different um, options here with different numbers and try to see exactly what was happening. And I mean, I could see little changes, but not really anything to really define it well. So I'm going to skip that and hopefully someone can help me out with that one. Pattern width, that's obvious. You can set your width and your height and that'll set the width and height of the square. And then the scale percentage. Let's see what happens here. Let's change this to like 20%. All right, so that was a big obvious change. So the size of these cells get a lot smaller and we have um, a lot bigger open space there. So that pretty much covers all the main options you have there. And the best way is just to jump in and, and start having fun with these. Now I'll go ahead and close this and show you how I created my design. I'll show one more thing. You do have the option to select the sketch you wanna place your Voronoi design on. So for example, I can create a sketch here and I'll choose the Z explain all right and then I'll just go to finish sketch and now when I select my option again for my Voronoi sketch generator now I can simply select my sketch here and you'll see here it gets selected and I'll click OK and as we can see now it's actually on the Z X plane instead of the X Y so that's how you can change the location of it just create a sketch first and then select that sketch as your source Okay, let's create my design here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start the same way, choose my sketch generator. I actually kept the default sizes here as far as the number of cells and, and the scale. I like the look of the default. I thought the cells were a good size for the panels I was making. So the only thing I did change was the panel width, which since I'm working with a 12 by 12 pieces of birch plywood, I'm gonna go ahead and type 12 inches. Um, you actually have to type inch because the default here is millimeters or it'll just do 12 millimeters. So um, type out inch, I'll click OK, and there's my design. Now, one thing that I did change is uh, you see the border here. I wanted it to be a little bit thicker over here on the border. I wanted to have sort of a wide uh, distance here. So I actually did things a little bit different. So let me undo and I'm gonna grab it again. 
So instead of putting 12 inches here and width and height, I'm going to go ahead and do 11.75 inch for both. Uh, click OK. OK, now I'll go into this sketch and edit it. So I'll go to Edit Sketch. I'm going to hit L for Line. I'll draw a line from uh, diagonally one corner to the next. I'm going to select that line and make it a construction line. Then I'm going to grab my center rectangle. So create down to rectangle, center rectangle. And I'm going to start that rectangle on the midpoint of my construction line. I could find that by referencing that little triangle there. And I'm going to click on that and drag out. And I'm going to make this bigger square 12 inches. So 12 inch by 12 inch. I'll just type that in. And now I have this um, bigger square here, the second outline. I'm going to double click to select that inner outline for my original um, Voronoi sketch. And I'm just going to delete that. And that's going to give me a slightly outer border here around um, as sort of framing my cells here. So that's really the only thing I did different. Um, if I want to extrude this, I'll just select it in uh, E for extrude and give this some thickness if I want to do something else with it. For example, if I want to 3D print it. But because I'm going to laser cut this, I usually don't um, go to the original sketch and then right click and save as the XF. The problem is I've noticed sometimes that these uh, construction lines will carry over and I don't want those. So what I'll normally do is I'll just create another sketch on the surface here of this body. It'll create a new sketch and it'll project your existing outline into that sketch. Essentially, it looks like nothing happened. If I click the sketch here, you don't see anything, but you can see how if I hover my mouse over it, those lines are actually there. So all I have to do now, I can just finish this sketch, right click on my sketch and go to save as DXF and then simply choose my location and save it. Now for this to work, for it to automatically project the sketch when you select the surface, that has to do with your preferences and this is the default. So if you haven't changed it, then uh, it should be the same. But if you go here to your design um, tab here, you'll notice that uh, there's an option to auto project geometry on active sketch plane. If you haven't turned this off, then when you create a sketch on a surface, it will automatically project the edges. Now, if that's not the case, then what you would have to do is simply go into that sketch and then you would hit P for project and then you can simply project the edges. Um, so just one extra step there if you don't have that option selected or if you happen to go in and change the default. Okay, and that's basically it. Now I have my DXF file saved, so now I can just send that to my laser cutter to print. Oh, and one more thing I'll share with you. I just actually realized this because I uninstalled Illustrator on my computer and I wanted a way to make sure that the DXF file actually worked fine. So Autodesk actually has a free DXF reader. All you have to do is go to viewer.autodesk.com, click on sign in, and you can use your same Fusion 360 login, which is your Autodesk login. And all you do is upload your design here. Drag your DXF onto the screen here. Give it a few seconds to process and it'll open it right up. And you've got options to go ahead and export it or print it. So just a nice little tip there that I actually just found out about. I'm really happy with the way the panel turned out. It looks like it's just floating in air above the table. It's a small thing, but I think integrating design into these types of safety barriers and just everyday things can go a long way in setting the right atmosphere in a space. It also shows how you can be creative with anything. This was actually the first time I used the Voronoi plugin in Fusion 360 and I found it very useful. It would have taken me a much longer time to sketch out each shape. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you're looking to get started with Fusion 360, I've put together an excellent free getting started mini series. Check it out with the link below. All right, I'll see you soon in the next project.